What's up guys, thanks again for turning into another oil field basics video blog. This is going to be part two to com the basics of combustors. This video is going to cover the placement, design, and troubleshooting. So if you aren't familiar with what a combustor is, why we use it, or where it's found, or the different types of combustors, be sure to check out our first video on that before you watch this one. Now like the last video, we also met up with our friends at Highbound EDI and met up with their applications engineer, Corey Haney who helped give us the information and the knowledge for this video. And you're gonna see different clips of him throughout this video. He is the one that actually designed their combustor from the ground up. So let's dive right in and start off talking about placement. So as with any combustion device, it's important that it's far away from any possible point of combustible gases, such as wellheads, tanks, gas lines, etc. Now Corey says this is a good practice to put the combustor at least 70 to 80 feet away from any potential source and open flares would even have to be much further away to this due to their higher temperatures and radiant heat that they release. Sometimes this distance requirement might also vary depending on your state regulations. So now let's talk about design. If you're an operator and you wanna have a combustor system engineered for you, what types of considerations, what things do you need to know? When selecting a combustor, you have a few main components that really go into it. You have, of course, the gas composition, um, which is going to reflect on how big those gas molecules are and the heating value associated with them. Um, secondly, you have line pressure. How much pressure do you have available to move the amount of gas that you have to the combustor and how far is that line going to be? Third, probably the most important, would be how much gas you're trying to get rid of. And so all three of those components are going to be essential in selecting a combustor. What's also important is to consider, okay, how far away is the uh, combustor from the source? Because now you have line loss, you have pressure loss uh, through there as well. Now that is the very reason that a lot of times the vapor lines coming off the tanks and going to the combustor system or VRU are so large is because of this line friction pressure loss. Many customers come to us and say, we need to move 200 MCF, but we only have one ounce of pressure. And that's really difficult um, to, to burn efficiently because of the, the simply the pressure loss. Pressure is going to be the motive force to move the gas to the combustor, but is essential to allowing the combustor to operate efficiently and effectively. Now, the amount of gas um, is going to play hand in hand, not only with, just, with the the ability for the burner to burn it, but then also it's gonna work hand in hand with the gas composition. The composition and the flow rate will determine how much of that gas can actually be released and, and burned within the combustor. Each combustor is rated for a certain amount of BTUs per hour. So how much re heat release can you have within a certain time period? And that's how you think of um, the number per se of combustors. Um, so if I had 100 MCF D of uh, propane, which would be 2400 BTU gas, then I would have 10 million BTUs per hour that would be exhausted through this combustor. If my combustor was only rated for 9 million BTUs an hour before it would overheat, I would obviously have to have another combustor or I could not handle that entire flow rate into this one combustor. Now let's talk about troubleshooting. One of the most common issues with combustors is smoking. And no, despite all other rumors and myths, they're not at all supposed to smoke. They're not designed to smoke at all. In fact, in some cases, you can even be fine on a daily basis if your combustor is smoking. And if it's smoking, something is wrong, and I'll let Corey walk you through the troubleshooting you might do if your combustor is smoking. One of the things I would look at in the beginning would be uh, restrictions in the line, because um, assuming that the combustor was at one point operating correctly, something has changed in the process. So you would look at maybe restrictions in the line um, because ultimately the, the smoking occurs because obviously combustion is not happening properly. And that occurs because the fuel is not mixing with the air properly. So either the air is not there or the fuel isn't there or the, they're not mixing well enough. So look at the air intakes. Is there any restriction uh, for the air moving into the combustor? If it has not changed um, and it seems to be open enough, then it should be okay. Um, move into the fuel restriction. 
Um, look at the line, look at, uh, hopefully, as we alluded to, good practices to have pressure transmitter, some sort of gauge. You need to be aware of what the line pressure is moving to the combustor. Is it in line with what the manufacturer recommends? If it's not, then that becomes a problem. Now, if there is adequate pressure up into where the, the burner, it goes into the combustor, um, and you have pressure up into that point, then that's not the problem. Then you look maybe internal and you say, okay, well, uh, we maybe we need to look at the, um, the burner itself. And maybe at that point we need to call the manufacturer because they will, of course, know their burner the best. Um, but of course, you look at the, um, the burner itself and you may see clogged orifices or wherever their manifold kind of looks like if it's uh, kind of a, a, um, a burner that has natural uh, kind of a, an entrainment of air at its at its tip. Maybe that air is being restricted, and so you're shooting just uh, straight fuel into it, and it's it's having a hard time mixing. Um, so that's those are probably the top three uh, items that I would look at: uh, just air restriction, fuel restriction, and then uh, improper mixing within the burner and in, in the combustor itself, being as the culprits to smoking. If liquid dropout is uh, an issue and it is present, that uh, certainly can cause um, smoke to occur because it, uh, gas mixing with an oxidizer and burning is one thing, but now you have this heavier liquid that you need to atomatize and get it within contacts of, of air. It becomes a much more strenuous process that the gas burner is just not built for. Um, now, if you're seeing smoke, and maybe in small trickles, um, I probably wouldn't attribute that to um, fluid. Now, you know, everyone might have a different experience. Typically, when I've seen um, smoking due to liquid, you see huge, large pl plumes of smoke, uh, very dark, and, and it's very dangerous because it can, it, the entire inside of the combustor, potentially, depending on the pressures and the flow rates, could be covered in, in hydrocarbon liquid that's on fire. So if liquid dropout is present, the best way to do it and to, to mitigate that and solve that problem is to put some sort of liquid knockout pot um, in line before it gets to the combustor. Uh, it needs to be evacuated regularly, whether it's automatically or manually. And um, it, your lines need to be sloped back to it. So from wherever your source is, your tank batteries, what have you, it needs to be sloping towards that knockout pot. And from that knockout pot, it needs to be sloping upwards to the combustor. So that any liquid between the source and the combustor are always following back to that knockout pot. So that'll do it on the basics of combustors. Now our good friends at Highbond EDI has allowed us to accept questions and then maybe we can do a follow-up Q&A on this very topic. So this is a pretty big topic itself and it's hard to fit it into two video blogs. So if you have questions on this topic, please post them below and then we'll get them over to Corey and the other folks at Highbond and then maybe do a follow-up Q&A on this very topic. And before you leave, I wanna again encourage you to check out our courses and materials at oilfoodbasics.com learn. If you wanna learn more about combustors, if you wanna learn more about where they fit into this mix, and how wells are drilled and how they're produced and completed and everything, check out our courses. And also please be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms so that you are among the first to know whenever we drop new content. Thanks and we'll see you in the next video.